Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create custom buttons with a hover, active and inactive state. This is gonna allow us to create a toggle effect using animations and effects. Let's go ahead and get started. So here in Wix Studio, we have this multi-state box that we created in our last video. As you can see, I can toggle through the different states of the multi-state box using these buttons above. Now, these buttons are not inside of the multi-state box. As you can see, this little gray box right here is our multi-state box, and we are using the buttons from outside of it to toggle it. Now, the only problem that I see with this is that these buttons don't tell us what state we are on. Now, obviously, because I made the text state three, you can tell that I am on state three, but maybe it's not that obvious. So how is the user gonna be able to know which state that we are on and which states they can toggle to, right? To do this, to have three different states for a button, we actually need to create our own custom buttons. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is with this row here, I'm gonna go ahead and give us some more room to work with. So I'm gonna set this to like 200 pixels for now. And then I'm just going to delete these buttons here. So to create a custom button, what I want to do is come over to the add panel and we're gonna add a container here, okay? Then inside of it, I want to add some text. So I'm just gonna grab this title here, place it there. I'm gonna change the text to say state one. And for this text, I actually don't want the responsive behavior to scale at all. So I'm gonna switch this over from scale proportionately to hug. And then for scale text, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this off. Then for the font size, I'm gonna set this to 16 pixels. And for the position, I'm actually just going to align this to the center. Now what I want to do is actually add a little bit of margin. So maybe for the left and right, I wanna add like 16 pixels. So I'm gonna do that for the left and right. Then for the top, maybe we'll do like eight pixels. Nothing will visually be different right now, but the reason we did that is because we want this container to be basically wrapped around this text element. So to do that, we're gonna head on over to the inspector panel and in the size properties, we're gonna press the three dots and turn on advanced sizing. Now you can see right now that the width is set to almost 29%, but instead what we're gonna do is actually switch this to max content. And you're gonna notice that it immediately shrinks down to the text element plus the 16 pixels of margin on the left and the 16 pixels of margin on the right. So as I'm hovering down here, pay attention to this, to the left and right area here. So when I hover over the left margin, you can see that little blue box appear and the blue box appear on the right hand side as well. That's exactly what we want. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and grab the bottom of this box and bring it as far up as I possibly can. And what that's gonna do is it's going to automatically snap the height to be the height of this text element plus the eight pixel margin on the bottom and top. Now for this design of this button, this is gonna be the state that is active. So we're gonna change the design up a little bit. First thing I wanna do is change the background to black. For the corners, we're gonna round the edges to like eight pixels and we're gonna turn off scale properties. We don't want anything to be responsive for these specific buttons. Then we're gonna grab the text itself and we're gonna change the text to white. So now we should have something that looks like this. However, now we need to create a hover state and an inactive state. And the last thing I actually wanna do before I forget is I actually do want to add a border. So I want to make the border black and we'll just make it one pixel, perfect. So now we have our button design complete, but now I want to create two more states. I wanna create a hover state and I wanna create an inactive state. So what I'm gonna do is come over to animation and effects and I'm gonna add a hover effect. For this, I'm gonna set this to a custom effect. I'm gonna create a custom animation, perfect. I'm gonna move the timing window out of the way for now. And what I want to do is set the background opacity to 10. And then I wanna grab the text element and I want to switch this over to black. So this is gonna be the hover state. But what I want to do now is I actually want to remove the time because by default, any th changes you make, it's, it's gonna add a 0.3 second transition. Now I just want to remove it. Now one thing to note here it's right now we are editing the animation itself. So if I just go ahead and press done and I press preview, you'll notice that when I hover over it, it's very immediate. However, when I hover off of it, it kind of still has that 0.3 delay there or 0.3 transition for the effect. So to change that, what we can do is edit the effect 
And we want to switch the designing to from animation one to the initial state. And here you will see the timing here as well. So we just wanna set both of these to zero, perfect. And now we can press done. Now what I want to do is with this animation here, I want to rename this to hover, okay? And then if we go back to setup, what we can now do is right click here or click the three dots and remove this because we don't want this effect right now, but we do wanna create one more state. So what we're gonna do is add a hover animation, switch over to custom, and we don't want to add the hover one again because we already created the state. We wanna add a new custom effect. For this one, we want it to be the inactive state. So for this, we're gonna change the text to black. And for the background color itself, we're gonna switch the back, we're gonna lower the opacity from 100 to zero. And I think I accidentally added a highlight to the text instead of changing the text color. So we'll just switch those around. Perfect. So now what I want to do is just go back into the timing, make sure it is set to zero, switch over to the initial state and make sure these are set to zero as well. Once we are done, we can press done. And for this effect, we want to rename this to inactive and press save. So now with this button, we have both states created. However, for this one, I want to make sure we remove the hover effect for now. And now what I want to do is create two more buttons. So I'm gonna copy this button and I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna bring this up right next to it. For this one, we're obviously gonna change it to state two. However, there are gonna be some key differences. By default, state one is gonna be active. So state two and state three, when we create these buttons, we want them to start with the inactive state. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm going to remove the background color. I'm gonna grab the text element and I'm gonna set this to black. So this is gonna be the default state for this button, okay? So now if I come over to the animation and effects, I now want to add an active state for it. So we're gonna go to add, we'll do custom, new custom. And what I want to do is make the background color 100% opacity. And for the text color, we'll set this to white. And as usual, we'll go into the timing for both the animation state and the initial state and make sure that these are set to zero. And we'll press done. Now for this animation three, we're gonna name this one to active, perfect. So now that we have this button design done, what we can do is copy this button and we can paste it and we'll place it right here and we'll change this one to say state three. Now I'm gonna grab all three of these containers here. We'll stack them together. We'll add 16 pixels of spacing in between, align it to the center, and then we will grab this row here and we'll set this to minimum content. So now we should have something that looks similar to what we had before. However, it is very obvious that the state one button is the current state that we're looking at. But now we need to set up triggers for these effects to happen. For example, when state two box is clicked, we want state one to go to the inactive state, right? So if we head on over to the animation and effects, and let's just remove the effects from this one, which now I realize it's probably on state three as well because I forgot to remove it before I duplicated it. So we'll just go ahead and take care of that really quickly. But when state two is clicked, we want state one to go inactive and we want state two to go active. So, so what we want to do is select a click interaction. We're gonna add a custom one. So the first thing we want to do is add the active state to this one. And we don't want to toggle on and off. We want to start the animation, perfect. And then if we go back, we now want to add another click interaction here, but we don't want to apply it to itself. We want to apply it to state one. So as I'm hovering over these containers here, you'll notice that they're highlighting over here on the artboard. So this one right here is highlighting the state one button. So we're gonna select this one and we're going to start an animation. We're gonna select a custom one. We want to start the inactive one, perfect. And last but not least with this third one right here, we want to remove or reset the animation for the active state on this one. So if state three is selected and is active, when state two is selected, we want to remove the active state from state three. I hope that makes sense. So we're gonna add another one. We're going to reset the animation. So we're going to remove the effect and we're going to remove the effect from the state three box. Perfect. So now let's just go ahead and preview it really quickly. When state two is selected, 
it removes the state from here. Now, when I select state three, unfortunately nothing quite happens here yet because we have not set up the triggers for this one yet. Same with state one. But good to know that state two is currently working. Let's go ahead and work on state three. When state three is clicked, we want to start an animation on itself and we want to choose the active state. But if state one is selected and we select state three, then we want to start an animation for the state one box and we want to apply or start the animation for inactive, okay? And last but not least, if state two is selected, then we want to remove the active state from state two. So we'll press add. We want to reset the animation for state two. Perfect. So once again, we'll jump on over to preview. And if step state three is selected, it removes the state one effect. If state two is selected and we select state three, it removes the effect from state two. Perfect. So now we only have this last one to do, which is state one. When state one is selected, we want to reset the animation for state two. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for state three. So we'll reset the animation for state three. Perfect. However, when state one is selected, we actually want to remove the effect on itself because with this one, we don't apply an active state because it's active by default. So we want to remove the inactive effect on this one. So now when we select state two, it goes inactive, but when you select state one again, it removes the effect here. And technically it removes the effect for state one as well, because this is state one's default state. So let's test it with state three. And it looks like everything is working correctly. But now it is time to actually get these to link up to the multi-state box again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the coding panel and you'll see we already have the code here down below, but I'm just going to redo the code really quickly and I'll just erase everything. So the current thing that we have selected is box 13. So instead of it being box 13, we want this to be state one BTN and we're gonna add an on click event. Let's go ahead and remove all of the little comments here in this function and we'll paste in the multi-state box change state and we'll change it to state one. Perfect. Now let's grab this box right here. We're gonna change the name to state two BTN, and then we'll add an on-click event. We'll remove all of the comments that it adds when you add the on-click events, and we'll paste in the code right up here, but we want to change this to state two. And last but not least, for box three, or for box 15, we want this to change to state three. So we'll call this state three button, add an on-click event. We'll delete all of the comments and we'll paste in this line of code and we'll change it the state to be state three. So now if we finally go over to preview the final time, when we click on state two, the buttons will adjust to show the active state and the multi-state box will change. And same with state three and all of the above. Now I do want you to just keep in mind that the more options you have to toggle, the more animation and effects you're gonna have to add to each one of those buttons. So this is actually a pretty simple way to actually add a really cool toggle effect without any code, just using the internal animation and effects. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again for watching and a special thank you to all of the channel members. It really does mean a lot. Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one.